My class managed to pull off an overwhelming win. Yeah, it was amazing. Take that, Calder man. And scales. Look at the confidence. Just look at it. Here we go. The final match. This one's for all the glory. Call in Deku. Call in Deku. Awesome screen. I'm pumped. <laughs> this is half as good as the Baku episode. I'm here for it. But what lessons will Deku learn, I wonder? And will it be connected to Mercy? That keeps being a thing. And, if, you know, if Mushroom Girl taught us anything, it's that there's no room for that. There's no room for Mercy. It's okay to kill your friends. Still bitter about that. He's fidgeting. That started yesterday. Oh, back to all for one. We can't keep this up much longer. He's exhausting our resources. He's our prisoner's direct subordinate, right? Right. This guy. He's, I mean, he's don't got a know lot of how people many under sympathizers him. he may have a lot hiding of in the world. Right. That's another advantage the villains have. They're not bound at all by legislation, so they can actually be private in their dealings. About the scene, I'm glad that they alluded to the difficulty of containing All for One, because it's got to be incredibly difficult. He's got to be, like, testing things out, right? Like some kind of velociraptor on an electric fence. I do apologize oh. for any undue trouble. Oh, he's communicating with them. Is this a quirk that he got? I can hear my little brother's voice. That's not creepy at all. That which is inherited. Interesting. And back to the fun school school event. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. When are you getting I need to get this ringtone. Ring Never! A phone call Sorry. Speaking of Gran Torino. He stared me straight in the eyes before saying this. The time has not yet come. Interesting. The same person that Deku saw, the younger brother. But didn't he tell Deku that it's already too late? Was he just like the time is not waiting? Yet come. Idly. Which implies it will come eventually. Something that affects one for all and its wielder. There's a phenomenon that seems to be happening just broadly recently, which is that there's a direction to quirks. Like all of this is going to culminate in something. For example, the doomsday thing or whatever, but it's also reasonable that something similar could happen with one for all because it's growing with each user, right? So you could imagine there, there being some kind of, I don't want to say end point, but phase at which it's greater than the sum of its parts or something like that. So this is almost definitely taking it way too far. But I feel like at the heart of most hero stories, there's this battle between good and evil, right? And while I think good and evil are often thought about as these arbitrary things that are sort of invented, I don't think that the case. I think there's actually a very, very grounded and material structure for those things. And I think it has something to do with the constant battle between life and death, you know, between decay or atrophy and growth and potential. That might sound cold and detached from humanity, but actually I think it's one of the most beautiful things. Like, what could be better than, as a human, following codes that most align with the things that we were made to be through just a gazillion years of handcrafted trial and error and success and failure and life and death and rebirth and pain pain and joy and beauty and all these things that led to this exact existence. And I think that to look closely enough at what feels good in media, you know, like what feels good for heroes, what feels good for people to do and what feels like strength is probably going to be connected to what is most conducive to harmony when you don't look at the immediate result, but at the big picture and how applicable and sustainable that strategy is over time. Because sometimes strategies that seem really good short term, like, you know, killing people, let's say, and stealing their food, turns out not to be optimal long term because it's not something that everyone can apply harmoniously. So how does this connect to My Hero Academia? I think that with humanity, the world or evolution or whatever you want to call it, has made a clear choice that the individual has potential and value. It seems to be just imagining, you know, different routes things could go and possibilities. Why hasn't life evolved to the point where it's just like a single godlike being that has something like the computing power of all human brains or something like that? It seems to me like that's just not advantageous or that there just hasn't been a way to build it yet and that humans are going to build it. But I just feel like having one organism, you know, one source of consolidated power is going to be way more limited in its potential than having a scattering of sentient creatures, each with, you know, let's say god-like powers, you know, god-like powers of cognition and ability to shape things and change the world. By having one all-powerful being, you basically hinge everything that's come before it, you know, the success and viability of the, the entire trajectory up to, the, up to this point on the choices of this one thing, this one creature, whatever it is. In that sense, survival is more binary. It's like live or die. Whereas with a collection of individuals, all sorts of individuals can make all sorts of dumb decisions, but the potential of humanity as a thing is still still there. It still exists. So just in here somewhere are these opposite but parallel lines of the individual versus like the all-powerful. And perhaps both are culminating. You know, both are going to culminate. One representing like power, consolidation, control, you know, and with Deku representing something more like the individual, maybe freedom, giving. And that's just something that to me feels 
right. It just feels more aligned with what feels most solid to me as someone who values like an ideal image where rather than everyone cedes their power to one powerful figure, everyone does the best to be the best link in the chain that they can be to make the whole stronger. Class B has seen so and well. back to the fun fight, the fun battle between class 1A and 1B. Be able to talk much. Right, just don't talk. I need to make sure I don't end up brainwashed. You gotta answer with hand signals or something like that. Ever since I was a kid, I heard the same thing on repeat. There's no way you can be a superhero with a quirk like that. Well, Shinzo can relate. In order for us to become heroes one day, we must sometimes act in less than heroic ways. Like you had all these grand hopes and dreams when you were a kid. But now those goals are just burdens. There's a real character from Manama. He's more than just Class 1 a hater. I'll get Class B to attack me. Then once we figure out where they are, we'll work together to capture them. Yeah, I mean, Deku is not exactly discreet with his, like, flashing green electricity and whooshing sounds. Thanks for being so flashy and telling us where you were. Sounds like my teammates flashy have found the rest of Class A's hopeless a way to describe it. already. What you weren't counting on was... Mineta? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. What if the screen just now was Shinso's voice modulator at work? If that's the case, you'd be leading us straight to the rest of your classmates who aren't actually in trouble. I mean, I feel like this actually is a great strategy against Deku. Just making Deku think. He's like the ultimate overthinker. Release! Meanwhile, well, at least they were just thinking around over here. <laughs> what are they doing? Now release. Interesting strategy. Twin impact. Fire! What is that? Twin impact, exactly. After he hits a target, he can cause a second impact remotely. Okay. We've got this. <laughs> I mean, they are working really well together. They're like sinking all their quirks. Where's Deku? Now, where's Shinzo? They got something planned with him. How can he smile like he doesn't have a thing to worry about? Because he wasn't able to take care of himself. The symbol of peace is gone! Oh, really digging deep. That's his quirk, psychology. What what is going on right now? What just happened? What is this the moment he foretold? Has the time come right now with Manama? <laughs> you pissed him off. What's going on? It's, it's all very confusing. <laughs> what is happening? Shinzo, you're up! Shinzo's it's like, I did not sign up for this. Maybe it's time to go back to general studies. Uh, I feel like the exercise is canceled. Cancel the exercise. Shinzo asked him a question or something. Um, teachers? <laughs> Someone? <laughs> Blood. Aizawa, there we go. Do something. Stop this yeah, match. Aizawa, especially. Wrong. Yeah, this is not... Uh, yeah. I was finally getting it under control! I was just getting started! Ah, uh, but he said you're only using a fraction of it. I don't want to make anyone else worry about me ever again! Speaking of the dangers of, like, consolidating power. <laughs> that was a, a bold move. This took a weird turn. I was expecting like this cheerful battle. <laughs> no, we're we're back to like main main plot stuff, I guess. When I was growing up, and Uraka flashback. I've yeah, been watching the whole way. Desperately to help those in need. Yep. And it's made me wonder. You gotta calm down. Who protects the heroes? It's a lot different than her initial motivation, which was like money. <laughs> His quirk's out of control. Shinzo, Aizawa. You guys are all all capable of doing something. Why is Uraka putting the team on her back? Shinzo, Do please. something, Shinzu. Shinzo. Shinzo, ask a question. <laughs> Although we don't even know why the brainwashing activated his power last time. I want to become an upstanding hero and use my quirk to help others. It's a great opportunity. Stop playing around and fight me! Oh, that's not <laughs> expected. Although that will get a response out of Midoriya for sure. Yeah. <laughs> this is a real issue for someone aiming to be like savior of the universe. You're gonna have to work harder. What nature you of Avatar is this? If you train like a madman, most things should work out fine. Whoa, where's your mouth, kid? That's freaky. Whatever, don't sweat it. The power you just shot out of you was originally my quirk. Oh, oh, so we can do more than just like power up. It, all these extra extra quirk stickers just got. That opens a lot of doors. The reason for that is because one for all itself is growing inside you. This quirk has evolved. Black Whip's got the might of one for all swirling within it, which means it's much stronger now than when it was mine. Ah, oh, man. I'm sort of blown away by like what this does for Deku and his power potential. How many past one for all wielders have there been? Rage can be the source of incredible strength. 
Yeah. But you need control, and not just over your body, but over your emotions as well. Ultimate responsibility, even for your feelings. You'll have six more quirks manifest as you improve. Six more. We're with you, kid. You're the one who will complete one for all! Alright, that was one of the most useful <laughs> Avatar speeches of all time. <laughs> when Roku leaves, I'm left with like a sour taste in my mouth. This guy leaves and I'm pumped. <laughs> like, I'm ready for <laughs> these six powers and more training. Speaking of Avatar, you know, the each previous wielder leaves a piece of themselves idea is something that's come up a, a bit on this channel and is even coming up right now in To Your Eternity. And there's something great and beautiful about it in real life, even without the sort of like succession of powers thing. I do feel like one of the, the underlying messages, especially contained in All for One versus One for All, is the idea that what gives greatest strength to people and what is ultimately for the good is each person taking the ultimate amount of responsibility they can for their own lives, being the best that they can be in the best way that they can, given their natural talents and attributes and experiences, and that that collectively is actually what creates the most good, is what sort of honors the universe in its desire for potential and its respect for the individual in that way. And that focus, that decision, those actions towards being one's best create more than just good now or a connection to life now or a node in the chain now, each person truly doing their best and living optimally and meeting their own potential ripples out into time time and therefore existence forever. Each moment, I believe, if we're taking maximum responsibility, is a choice. And that includes, even though this is difficult, emotions and thoughts, at least to a certain degree, and especially in regards to how we interpret them and act on them, at least. And the smallest things, you know, the smallest acts of goodness, the smallest acts of resisting darkness or resisting evil, carry out far, far beyond what we can ever see or imagine. But they carry out for sure. And you also hope get stronger, or at least allow humanity to get stronger, by just creating goodness that is a, a now a foundation, like there's something better. There is less of something terrible to avoid or fix or whatever, and more of just strength, let's call it, to build upon, which allows the next person to do it better, you know, to focus their resources better. And to me, the way I conceptualize it is that doing anything, you know, anything that is for the good or, or against the not so good is of equivalent value or similar value to even the greatest, most magnificent, most epically heroic moments in shows, just because it controls for circumstance. Like, if you just are the best in any given moment that you know how to be, you are meeting the maximum amount of potential that the, you know, the universe has given you the chance for, even if through whatever combination of events that space happens to seem smaller or less epic in comparison to other people with different circumstances, if that makes sense. And the stakes are greater than just ourselves. You know, it's like a permanent mark. It's a permanent building block in whatever is to come from now into potentially eternity, right? And so there's a responsibility there, which you know, is maybe initially terrifying, but I, I think also on some level is beautiful and very directly a connection to life and perhaps something like meaning, you know, meaning of life. It's Erwin Smith, you know, the man who single-handedly defeated the greatest army on earth with the help of a few scouts. You live to honor the legacy of those who came before you and in doing so, you also honor and support the legacy of the people who come after you. Oh, it's... What? I guess no one called it. That's true. It's not over till the refs stop it. Get him, Manetta! I refuse to accidentally hurt anyone again! <laughs> and that's all that. We need a plan, but there's too much to think about. And you can't really talk. We're back to normal. We're good. We're good to go. The match continues. Yeah, yeah, we're all good. We're all good here. Oh my god, no! <laughs> And here I was stupid enough to think we're going to resolve it this episode. Well, that opened some doors. I was just expecting, like, the nice wrap-up of this little school battle. But no, Deku now has six quirks to unlock. And that guy made me feel so good. <laughs> that previous incarnation, I'm pumped. I'm ready for these new skills and this training of these new skills. This also opens a thematic door that I think was always there as potential, but, you know, hasn't really come up much in the show, which is Deku's danger. Just because he's just so aligned with helping people and doing the right thing and you know being a symbol of peace and all that that there hasn't been that much of that idea of him like losing control emotionally but yeah i mean why wouldn't that be a risk especially if there are powers outside of his control especially if he's like a combination of all these other things especially if conceivably his worst or biggest challenges have yet to come as well as his greatest power you know it's there it's all there what are the other quirks i wonder and what is the connection to shinzo although maybe i'm like expecting too much from that or reading too much into it it came out when he was mind controlled. There's gotta be something there, right? Or not, who knows. But yeah, that's the end of episode 10. I'll see you guys next time when we wrap up this school training arc, I think, with yet another Class 1A victory. And Shinzo joining the class, finally. <laughs>